what's up guys, I am Black Ops Amazing, welcome back to another Zombies video, where today we are looking at the story of Samuel J. Stulinger. If you enjoyed today's video, as always, a like rating, anytime you feel like it would be very much appreciated. Could we shoot for 3,000 likes on this video? That is a massive goal to hit, but I believe in you guys, if we could do that, that'd be awesome. Thanks for watching, make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already, and without further ado, when you're ready... Here we go. So Samuel J. Stuhlinger is a strange character. In terms of his appearance, he has a moustache, a charcoal sweater, he wears a green vest, shorts and glasses. He has short grey hair, so he's an older character, and always carries around with him a small bag or a fanny pack. In terms of his personality, well, he's incredibly paranoid, and he seems to be a bit of a conspiracy theorist. He gets frustrated with the lack of explanations to the events that occur, and so he creates his own theories, often involving aliens or government cover-ups. Riddled with guilt due to his history of cannibalism, Samuel doesn't like to talk about himself around the others, out of fear that they will either kill him or abandon him if they know his secrets. Samuel hates Misty and dislikes Malton, but as we know, he likes Russman. So let's get in to his story. After the destruction of Earth in the year 2025, Samuel J. Stuhlinger was one of the very few survivors left from the missile launch, and so took to shelter with a survival group called The Flesh. The Flesh was a group that claimed eating the flesh from the zombie horde was the only way to survive the new world. And this act of cannibalism would grant Stuhlinger with the ability to hear the voices of the ether. However, his contact with the infected flesh gave Samuel symptoms of the zombie virus. Because Samuel had been eating the flesh of the zombies that were infected with Element 115, and as we know, Element 115 has a direct link to the ether, this now meant that anyone who ate the flesh also had a link to the ether as well. And since Richthofen was in control of the zombies, since he was the controller of what was essentially the ether, Richthofen now had contact with everyone who was involved with the flesh including Stuhlinger. He could talk to them in their heads. And so, sometime later, the Flesh began to hear Richthofen's voice, where Richthofen began to give them orders. He told all members of the Flesh to attack a rival camp of survivors who had sided with Maxis. But during the chaos, a horde of zombies moved in and destroyed all who remained. And Samuel Stuhlinger was one of the only few to survive. And this is when he met Russman, who had stolen a bus from an abandoned Broken Arrow facility. This bus, as we know, was the transit bus with a robot driver named Ted. And so Russman and Stuhlinger became friends, riding across the broken earth on the bus. Sometime later, the bus stopped off at a small town in ruins of Hanford. Washington, where Stu and Russman rescued their fellow survivors, Misty and Malton, from the horde of zombies. And this is where the four became a crew for the first time. And this is also when we begin in transit, where Samuel was once again contacted by Richthofen. Samuel was now Richthofen's only hope. Being the only survivor of the flesh, he was the only one that Richthofen could contact. And so Richthofen made it his mission to keep Samuel safe and alive so he could do his missions down on Earth. Richthofen tricked Samuel into thinking he was good. And so he was told to polarize a pylon for him which was located in the cornfields near the town. And Richthofen told Samuel that he needed to do this if he was ever going to survive. Meanwhile, Dr. Maxis, who was trapped in the computer systems, also contacted the survivors in hopes of them polarizing the pylon in his favor. And so the transit crew powered the tower for Maxis. The Maxis side of the Easter egg throughout all of the Black Ops 2 maps is canon. So in reality, that is actually what happened. Even though the Richthofen side is available for us to do, in terms of story, it is the Maxis side that took place. So in transit, they powered the pylon for Maxis, not Richthofen. Although still hoping to gain control, Richthofen then teleported Samuel and the survivors to a series of crumbling skyscrapers in Shanghai, China, where the second polarization device needed was located. There, Richthofen contacted Samuel once again and blackmailed Samuel into helping him, threatening that if he doesn't, he will reveal his former affiliations with the flesh to the rest of the group. While Maxis also insisted that the four aided 
his favor. While talking to Richtofen in Die Rise, a horde of zombies arrived. And as they go to attack Stuhlinger, his best friend Russman saves him. But whilst doing this, Russman is then eaten alive. Afterwards, as we see in the cutscene, Misty and Moulton arrive in an elevator where they save Samuel, but the characters just go on to arrive at another floor where they are swarmed and killed by the zombies. And so Richtofen, needing them to power the tower in his favor, he resurrects them, teleports them back in time where the characters return to the beginning of Die Rise having no memory that previously they were killed. Where once again Richtofen tells Samuel that he needs to convince the other characters that the tower must be polarised in his favour. But once again the crew betray Richtofen, they go along with what Maxis says and they power the tower in his favour. With the second tower now being powered up for Maxis, they then head to the third and final location, where Russman leads the group through the ruins of Europe and Africa, hoping to find the answers, where they eventually come along the rift, located in Angola. Once there, Richtofen contacts Stuhlinger once again and tells him to polarise the third and final tower located above the rift in his Favor. Although this time Samuel felt reluctant in helping Richtofen. And so, as we know, canon in terms of the storyline, Samuel and the others for one final time aid Maxis. They power the pylon in Maxis's favor, helping him complete his goal and finally reach Agotha. With Maxis now in control, he tells the transit crew that he is going to destroy Earth and all of its surviving inhabitants, meaning that the transit crew would die. But suddenly, out of nowhere, the premise version of Richtofen opens up a rift in Buried, allowing the transit crew to escape before Maxis destroys the Earth and kills them. Once the transit crew escape from this rift, they are also then followed by undead Richtofen and a bunch of zombies. This premise version of Richtofen resurrected his dead self from the giant and told that unversion of himself to follow the transit crew on their new journey. And so, when he opened that rift in Buried, allowing the transit crew to escape, undead Richtofen did what he was told and followed them through the rift as well, along with a bunch of zombies. But this now meant that the transit crew did didn't die and buried and went on to tell another tale. Where after escaping buried, the transit crew are now teleported to an abandoned, destroyed town. Still fighting off against the zombies, Russman, who was looking for food, was almost killed by them. That was until he was saved by his best friend, Samuel. The two eventually end up outside on the streets and fend off against the zombies with salvaged weapons, though they eventually run out of ammo. Misty then provides them sniper support, allowing the two to run to her so they are safe. Richtofen, this time the premise Richtofen, then begins to contact Samuel once again, where he tells Stuhling that he needs to listen to what he says if they want to survive. Since they didn't listen to what he said before, Stuhlinger attempts to convince the others to listen to the voice in his head, and that he says he has a plan for them, but this fails. The crew don't listen to Stuhlinger, they don't believe him, they think he's crazy, and just as the zombies are about to kill and overrun the transit crew, Stuhlinger cries out for help and a portal is open. The premise Richtofen opens them a portal which allows them to escape, but once again they are followed by the zombies and undead Richtofen. Once escaping the abandoned town, the transit crew then arrive on the other side of the portal at the Broken Arrow facility, where Russman used to work. Stuhlinger tells the others that the voice in his head has told him that their purpose here is to find the element, prompting him to question Russman of his knowledge. Russman angrily threatens Stuhlinger as he begins to have flashbacks of his time working here at the Broken Arrow facility. Russman begins to remember about the experiments he did with the animal test subjects, using a large shard of element 115 that the organisation recovered from Division 9, mutating the animals into what Russman refers to as bios. After having his flashbacks, Russman leads the crew inside where they find the shard of element 115. Once they find the shard, they pick it up, and when he does, the zombies and the bios begin to attack the crew. And so, once again, Stuhlinger cries out for Richtofen's help where he opens up another portal, allowing the crew to escape from the facility with the shard. But the crew then end up in another research facility, this time Zero Base, where Malton attempts to tinker with the security system, only to trigger a hologram of a Sophia-shaped robot AI speaking in a female German accent. As we know, 
this is Sophia, and she demands authorization. And after failing to provide it, security laser barriers then appear, trapping the crew. But fortunately, this also prevents the zombies from reaching them. The barriers, however, begin to close in, forcing them to open the door, but they are quickly rescued by Malton. After escaping, the crew then make their way through the facility to a strange looking contraption. The crew use the Element 115 shards. They then all sit down on four different chairs and this contraption extracts their blood. And Richthofen tells Stuhlinger that this is to help recognize them and differentiate them from zombies. After extracting their blood, a flash occurs and the four are then transported to a once barren forest. They are transported to the broken earth, leaving Misty wondering if they have fixed the world. But as we know, that isn't the case. The crew are now at the empty earth where they think they are safe. Whilst exploring the barren forest, the crew eventually find a large facility that was built by Dr. Maxis. Stuhlinger discovers that objects that he touches in this abandoned universe turn into ash. Richthofen tells Stuhlinger that what they are in is a tangent timeline, one that human life never existed in prior to the arrival of Dr. Maxis, and the appearance of the crew has just accelerated the collapse of its timeline. Richthofen then points Stuhlinger towards a door at the base, seeing that this is what they are here for. But as Stuhlinger begins to enter, Richthofen immediately stops him, and he tells him that first, before he goes in, he must convince the others to go along with him. Richthofen believes that Stuhlinger won't survive if he goes in on his own. But once again, like he's done many times before, Stuhlinger fails to convince the others. And whilst trying to convince them, the zombies then attack out of nowhere. And so Stuhlinger quickly decides that he's going to open that door for himself. He ignores Richthofen, opens the door, goes in, and in this room, he finds the Canorium. He picks it up, but when he does this, this triggers the security system that Maxis set in place. Cyborg robots to protect the Canorium if it was ever to be moved. And so when Stuhlinger picked it up, the cyborg zombies awoke and began to chase him. The cyborgs, along with the normal zombies and undead Richthofen, all begin to chase the transit crew through the empty earth. Samuel and the rest of the crew run away where they return to where they first came from. They give their blood once again and then Primus Richthofen opens them up a portal for them to escape. Where finally they come out at the other end in the house, where they come face to face finally with the premise version of Richthofen. Samuel hands the Canorium over to the premise version of Richthofen. Richthofen then reads it, he learns what he needs to do, he knows everything that involves him in each and every universe, he knows the location of the summoning key, he learns about the Shadow Man and everything that Richthofen needs to do in order to secure a perfect universe. And after learning all of this, Primus Richthofen then offers the transit crew a way to live. He tells them that the only way they are going to survive is that if he puts them in stasis chambers. Because there is no universe out there that doesn't exist without zombies, there is no other universe out there which is safe for them to live in, free from the undead. Richthofen tells them that the only way that they will live freely from the undead and survive is that if he puts them in stasis chambers and once he finds a universe in the future that is free from the undead and safe for them to live in he will awaken them and put them in that universe but of course the transit crew don't exactly trust Richthofen and so he tells them that they have until he comes back to decide. Richthofen then teleports away where he meets the undead version of himself. The undead version of Richthofen then gives the blood of the transit crew to Premise Richthofen. Obviously he got this when the transit crew gave their blood samples to the machine to find out if they were human. When they did that, after they left, the undead version of Richthofen collected their samples from the machine and now when he's face to face with Premise Richthofen, he hands the blood samples over to him. With Premise Richthofen now having the blood samples, he returns to the transit crew where they meet at the underground lab in Mob of the Dead. The transit crew agree with what Richthofen says. They want to live in a universe free of zombies and so Richthofen tells them that fine, they must do this and he puts them in stasis chambers on ice ready for them to be awoken when he finds a perfect universe for them. The transit crew are then put to sleep in the lab under Alcatraz ready to be awoken again in the future and that is is the story of Stuhlinger. That is everything that involves him in the zombie story. So 
there we go. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have a like rating, would be very much appreciated. Make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest summit videos on the channel. Let me know what you think and also let me know what you want to see next in the comments section below. And of course, we'll see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.